All praise is due to Allah Almighty, the creator of entire creation. Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad, peace be upon him, his companions, his household. May Allah's blessings be upon them all. And may Allah bless us all and may Allah grant us all goodness. I mean, my beloved brothers, my sisters, let's remember something. We're in the month of Ramadan and this month is almost coming to an end. Notice how the days are actually flying subhanallah so make the most of this month to earn closeness to the almighty to be able to achieve goodness to do a lot of good deeds and to be able to uh, achieve the forgiveness of the almighty and paradise i mean i mean ya rabbi my brothers and sisters this is also known as the month of the quran شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah speaks about the month of Ramadan and He connects it to the revelation of the Quran. The Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What does it have in it? What is this Quran? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it has in it guidance for mankind. If you look at the rules and regulations that have been sent down through the Quran by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will find that it has in it lots of discipline. What does Allah want from you? You need to pray. You need to give charity to the poor. You need to be a good person. You need to worship whoever made you alone. And you need to respect and revere all the prophets who were sent to humankind. You also need to uh, fast, which means practice self-restraint and discipline. And you need to go to the pilgrimage in order to learn from and emulate the practices of the prophets Abraham, may peace be upon him, and Muhammad, may peace be upon him too. So this in a nutshell is part of Islam, what it teaches in terms of the five pillars. But the other rules and regulations also contain within them lots of goodness. Allah says, Fihi, yani, hudal linnas. Hudal linnas means primarily there is guidance for people in it. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't deceive, don't be jealous, don't hurt others, don't kill, don't harm, don't maim, don't be evil, and so on. Those are rules that you will attain paradise through. Subhanallah. What's that? That's guidance. It's really amazing. And so if you look at uh, the other rules, the rules of morality, you know, dress in a very modest way. Make sure that you are uh, you're not vulgar, uh, abusive, immoral in your speech. Make sure that you watch your eyes. You don't look at bad things. You know, see no evil, hear no evil. Subhanallah. You don't look at bad things. You don't listen to evil things. You don't have bad company. You need to control and discipline yourself. Why? All these are brilliant things. They are there to ensure your success on earth to begin with and then in the hereafter. So this is amazing. This is amazing. People look at Islam and say too many rules and regulations. Honestly, yes. There are many rules and regulations, but they are all there in order to benefit you, my beloved creature. Allah is saying to you, all these rules and regulations are there to benefit you in this world and the next. So let's remember this, my beloved brothers and sisters. The Quran has been sent in order to guide us. Hudan. الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان and there are clear-cut signs in this Quran, beautiful signs. You know, Allah shows you, He speaks about the skies, the planets, the earth, the rivers, the mountains, the other creatures. He speaks about previous creation. He speaks about previous generations. He speaks about what's to come. So much Allah has said, He asks us to ponder over ourselves. He speaks about the creation of man, the stages of that creation. All of this, Allah says, it's amazing, it's bayinat, clear-cut signs that Allah has sent to us. Similarly, when you look at the creation around you, you will only be led to the supreme maker of that creation, Allah. Him and Him alone shall be worshipped. I will put my head on the ground indeed. For who? For none other than He who made me. Subhanallah, that's Islam. That's amazing. So the Quran teaches us this and Al-Furqan means the criterion, the distinguisher, 
the one that separates good from bad, the one that makes manifest what is good and what is bad. That's the Quran. So the Quran has in it, do this and don't do this. This is good for you. This is not good for you. Clear cut. And then Allah says, and it's amazing, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the Quran the Furqan as well. It's one of the names of the Quran is Al-Furqan. Quran is something that is recited. And Furqan is the criterion, something that uh, would distinguish between right and wrong. And this is why there is a whole surah and a chapter in the Quran known as Surah Al-Furqan. In it, Allah describes the Quran as well. And it's just amazing. Tabarak alladhi nazzal al-furqana ala abdihi. You know, glory be to he who has revealed the Furqan upon his worshipper in order that uh, he can warn the people, he can warn all, everyone, subhanallah. Who is this? It is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what is the warning? The warning is regarding the hereafter that is to come, regarding the do's and don'ts and what would happen if you perpetrated this that Allah has prohibited. So Allah says, Turn to Allah. It's amazing how uh, Allah Almighty describes this beautiful, beautiful book uh, in so many different ways. Ya ayyuhan nasu qad jaatkum maw'idatum min rabbikum wa shifa'un lima fi sudur wa hudan wa rahmatun lil mu'mineen. Amazing. Allah says, O oh people, O oh people, what has come to you from your Lord? Mawidatum mir rabbikum, a reminder from your Lord. You know, a mawidah is made up of a warning, but it's a reminder as well. So this lecture, this reminder, this uh, beautiful, uh, amazing book has been sent to you, O people. Mawidatum mir rabbikum from your Lord. Wa shifaun lima fi sudur. It has in it cure for the diseases of the heart. For the diseases of what is in the bosom, the chest. What are the diseases? Subhanallah, we have physical ailments, we have spiritual ailments, we have, uh, you know, s- uh, the, uh, sicknesses within the mind, within the system, your body, your spirituality, your mind. All of this, Allah says, Shifa, Lima fi Sudur. It has in it cure. Subhanallah. Allah describes the Quran with Shifa in many places of the Quran. There is cure in it in a thousand ways, meaning multiple ways. How? Number one is your conviction and your faith in Allah will definitely grant you contentment and it will definitely give you a calmness. You are happy, you are content even without anything material because your faith is unshakable. You have solid faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You believe My brothers and sisters, the Quran provides that for you. It gives you reassurances. It tells you about the past. It reminds you of what's happening right now. And it gives you a glimpse of what's going to come into the future. That's amazing. That is Allah. And Allah Almighty has given us a gift in the form of the Quran. Subhanallah. What a great gift. It's the biggest gift. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. My brothers, my sisters, we need to connect with this Quran. And this is the month of the Qur'an. It has in it cure for that which is in the heart, that which is in the bosoms. Let me explain what else would be cured. Your jealousy, hatred, envy, ill-feeling, etc. within the heart, cured. The reason is, you believe in Allah. Why should I be jealous of someone? What is jealousy? Have you thought about it? So Allah gave someone something and you are jealous of that gift that they have. Ultimately, you're at war with Allah because Allah is the giver. Who gave them what they have anyway? Wasn't it Allah? In that case, you're displeased with the distribution of Allah, which is not good enough. You can't do that. So Allah says, if you believe in me and your belief is solid and unshakable, you won't be jealous of people because you know it came from me. You would thank me. You might pray to me to say, Oh Allah, you gave them, Alhamdulillah, give me too. Wow, that's a beautiful dua. But to say, "Mm, I'm jealous of this guy, envious. No, those qualities will be cured when you connect yourself with the Quran. And when you understand it, when you read it, correct your recitation, when you learn how to read the Arabic and you melodiously go through it, when you look into the meanings, when you try to understand the meanings and when you put into practice 
some of the rules and regulations that are within this Quran, you will then be able to achieve the broader benefit from this beautiful book known as the Quran. Now, the cure that it has in it is amazing. Sometimes some of the verses will cure you and protect you from harm that may be of a nature that does not meet the eye. For example, we are taught that if you read Ayatul Kursi, which is an ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, if you read that ayah, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum, it's a verse. It's a, it's a long verse, relatively long. It would take you perhaps less than a minute to read it, but if you were to read it thrice, together with the last two chapters of the Qur'an, or surahs, should we say, of the Qur'an, which would take you also another minute to read, so altogether two minutes to three, if you were to read these repeatedly, you will be protected from the devil, you'll be protected from jinn kind, from harm, you'll be protected from the evil eye, you'll be protected from a lot. That's protection by what? The Qur'an. Subhanallah. I recited the Qur'an. The repetition of certain verses would give you amazing results. I read Surah Al-Fatiha. What is it? It is the opening Surah of the Quran. The recitation is melodious. You know, there are studies that are done to prove that even those who don't know the Arabic and don't even believe in Islam, they're not even Muslims, are impacted positively in their heartbeat and their mind calming down when they listen to a melodious, beautiful recital in the correct manner of the words of the Quran. Subhanallah. Amazing. Amazing. My brothers and sisters, let's understand this. We must benefit from something. If the non-Muslims are benefiting from the melodious recital of the Quran, what about the Muslims? Subhanallah. It's amazing. I pray that we can all benefit from it because it's revealed for everyone. Definitely. And do you know that recently I had someone who heard the evening prayers on the microphone for the first time in a Middle Eastern country. And they asked me, they recorded a little bit and it was Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening surah. And they said, what, is the, what, are, what are they saying? You know? And when I told them the meaning of it, they were intrigued. They were amazed. They say, look, the melody is so soothing. And at the same time, now that you're telling me the meaning, what does it mean? All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds, the most merciful, the most, you know, forgiving. Uh, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm din owner of the day of judgment. You alone we worship, you alone we ask for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those whom you have favored and not the path of those who have gone astray, uh, who have earned your anger, nor those who have gone astray. Wow, that's it. And I say, Amin. That's repeated all the time. Guide us to the straight path, guide us to the straight path, guide us to the straight path. This repetition would help. That's why it's called as sab al-Mathani. You know, these are seven verses of Surah Al-Fatiha that are repeated. Why? There is cure in them for you, for the diseases of the heart, for the mind, for the spirituality, the soul, the body. Amazing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. May Allah grant us every goodness. So my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shifa'u lima fi sudur. In the Quran, there is cure for that which is in the bosoms. In it, there is guidance and mercy for those who believe. So if you believe, you will achieve guidance from the Quran and mercy. The mercy of Allah is not just in the hereafter, but even in this world. You have a lot of calmness, contentment. Take a look at those who believe and those who are connected to the Quran. Many times you can see it in the way they carry themselves, that this person has a connection with the Quran and they have a connection with Allah because they are calm, they are relaxed, they are focused. You know, when you run behind that which is transgression, you lose your family, you lose your loved ones, you're not content, you're always on edge, you have a temper, you have so much to deal with. No, when you are focused, you are so happy because you spend time with your family. You know how to prioritize, you have loved ones. The Quran teaches you all of this. The Quran tells you, 
what to do. Allah speaks about how the spouses are supposed to be a means of mercy and comfort for one another and security for one another. Allah speaks about how important it is to spend the time with your family members and save them from hellfire and from what is wrong. How you're supposed to invest your time with your loved ones, how you should reach out to your relatives first before everyone else, how you should fulfill their rights, be kind to them, how you should resolve your matters and disputes. That's cure. Imagine you have a dispute and you read the verses where Allah says, resolve your matters. What do you do? If you really believe, you'll try to resolve your matters at least. And when you try, you're reassured, I'm smiling. Even though I might not have succeeded, but I'm smiling because I know the Almighty's watched me. I know He knows what exactly I've done and I've tried my best and He will definitely reward me for it. I feel reassured. Allah gives you protection from anxiety. People are struggling at the moment with the virus going on. May Allah protect all of us. But there is a lot of anxiety. People have lost their jobs. They've lost loved ones. Turn to the Quran. It will give you the cure you need. It will grant you the comfort that you're looking for. It will safeguard you from anxiety, from stress and so much more because it teaches you to hand your affairs to Allah, to trust Allah, trust Him. When He tells you you are going to meet in the hereafter, you are going to meet in the hereafter. Have conviction. When Allah speaks to you, listen and believe it. And Allah says, by that you will be calm. Why live on edge all the time? You know, you lost a job. Alhamdulillah, believe that there will be something good that comes out of it. Look at what the Quran says. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ At times, you love something and it's not good for you. And sometimes you hate something or dislike it and it's really good for you. وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah knows, you don't know. So Allah is telling you, trust us, we know. Have you been praying? Yes. Are you a decent person, reasonably good person? Yes. You believe? Yes. Don't worry. Everything else is okay. Ajabal li amri mu'min. Amazing are the affairs of a true believer. Fa inna amrahu kullahu lahu khair. Because everything that happens to a believer is only good. Nothing bad or evil can happen to a believer. I mean, something happening to you, it can only be good. How? Because Allah says, وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ This gift is for nobody except a true believer who has proper belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In asabathu sarra'u shakara fakana khair Allah. Wa in asabathu dharra'u sabara fakana khair Allah. If when goodness befalls or comes to you as a believer, you are thankful. It brings you closer to the Almighty. It was good for you. I mean, something good happened, I'm okay. What about something bad? You bear patience. You believe in Allah. You know that better days are to come. You believe that something good is going to come out of this, even if it means 10 years later. You believe it. And you know what? You bear that patience, beautiful patience. Sabrun jamil. You know, there is a patience that is beautiful. It beautifies your face. It gives you calmness. You know, stress is a killer. Everyone says that because it starts shutting down your organs. It starts tampering with your minerals and vitamins. It starts messing with your mind. Allah says, don't stress. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Allah says to His Messenger, صلى الله عليه وسلم, and the lesson is for all of us. We know that what they are saying against you or about you, negative, is tightening your chest. We know that your chest is being tightened. <clears throat> By what? By what they're saying. You're not happy about what they're saying. We want to tell you how to remedy that, Allah says. The cure of it. What is it? فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ Rabbik. Declare the praise of your Lord. Declare the praise of your Lord. Glorify your Lord in praise. وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ And pray. Find yourself in prostration. Be with those who prostrate all the time. Be on the ground. You know, pray. Cry to your maker. Call out to your maker alone and worship Allah until the end, right until you die. You need to continuously worship Allah. Trust Him, believe in Him, have hope in Him and things will be okay. Allah says, we know what's going on. It was designed by us anyway as a test for you. So this is Allah. He's telling us, find yourself in prostration. We know it will hurt you what they say, but don't worry. 
you make sure you praise Allah. Keep on praising Allah. When something negative happens to us, Allah says, الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ Those who are believers, they are the ones whom, when difficulty and calamity strikes, قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ They make an utterance. They say, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ We all belong to Allah completely and we're ultimately going to return to Him anyway. So this is Allah Almighty warning us, telling us, reminding us, giving us a gift, the guidance, the goodness, the cure. The cure of what? Everything. Everything. Allah will make you so calm, so cool. You know, you lost your job, you take it in your stride, you minimize your spending and you keep looking for a job, you work, take it in your stride and you must make sure you realize one day you have much more than what you had prior when you just lost your job. You might have lost it because Allah wants to give you more. You know, they say when you're holding something, the Almighty will make you open your hand first so that you drop that item before He gives you a lot more. Subhanallah. That's one of the ways of looking at it. So don't despair. My brothers and sisters, this is from Allah. Allah has revealed to us cure and goodness. And Allah tells us, if you're a true believer, the words of the Quran will really impact upon you in an amazing way. You know, the stories of the Quran will give you comfort. If this could happen to better people than me, then what's happening to me is actually a good thing. If the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, went through these struggles that the Quran has mentioned, then what are the struggles I'm going through? Nothing. I will bear it for the sake of Allah. If the previous messengers had issues and dealt with it in this way and that way, and if this would happen, then I can expect even worse. But subhanAllah, Allah's blessed us. We're sitting here and reminding each other about the cure found within revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhana Rabbi al May Allah grant us the true ability to fulfill the, the rights that the Quran has over us. To read it, to learn it, to rectify the way you recite it, to melodiously read it. Even to listen to it, it's very interesting. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to love to listen to the Quran being recited by some of the companions. And he makes mention of this. He says, oh, I love it to be recited. I like to listen to it from you. So uh, listen to it as well. It's calming. Remember, every one of us has a different temperament. And each one has a, a, a soothing recitation that would actually impact on them perhaps different from that which would impact on someone else. So we have so many reciters across the globe. That too is one of the great gifts of Allah. Because in the, in the melodious recitations, there is cure. You listen to the various reciters, you go up and Google them, check them out. Listen to each one until you find one or two who would actually really impact on your temperament, on you. It would calm you, soothe you, it would give you that feeling of reassurance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those who are Ahlul Qur'an. Ahlul Qur'an are those who were uh, praised in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu They are also praised in the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, that, you know, the Qur'an would actually, and this is from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu the Qur'an would bear witness for you in a way that's known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment. What did you do with this Qur'an? You know, don't uh, throw it aside. And then the messenger, peace be upon him, would complain, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا, قَوْمِ يَا, يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا You know, uh, the messenger says, Oh my Lord, look at my people. They have actually abandoned this book. They, they are not taking it seriously. We don't want to be from those. So when we are Ahlul Qur'an, we become the people of the Qur'an. They are the VIPs on the Day of Judgment. And subhanAllah, الَّذِينَ هُمْ أَهْلُ اللَّهِ وَخَاصَّتُهُ They are the people of Allah. And they are the special people of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us from among them. So give a lot of importance to the Qur'an and your entire world will open. Every door that was locked will actually be flung open by the will of Allah. But be patient. When the time is right, you will definitely have the best of this world and the next. 
my brothers and sisters in the Sultanate of Oman and all those across the globe, it was so beautiful speaking to you today. And shukran, shukran for lending us an ear. And for I want to thank the organizers as well for giving me this opportunity to be able to speak to you on this beautiful topic of the Quran, one of the topics that's very, very close to my heart. And I do firmly believe that if we have a better relationship with the Quran, our lives will definitely become much, much better. بارك الله فيكم أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته